Welcome to another video on this channel. In the last video, we went over quick sort. So in this video, I want to keep it short and I just want to uh, make one more uh, enhancement, you could say, uh, which is if your uh, input array has a lot of non-unique elements or a lot of duplicates, then in that case, the typical partition function of quick sort can be improved a little bit to return a range instead of uh, just one index uh, what i mean to say is if you have multiple duplicates it could it's good to sort of cluster all of those duplicate elements in the array in their right sorted position so that you have less number of elements that you recurse over so that's called two-way partition uh, just to give you a quick example for instance if you have an array with six nine let's say six five six four seven right so our partition function if we go for three-way partition should return something like this four five and then it should place all the six all the elements uh, with uh, six in a cluster in the middle and then everything greater than six so nine and seven so in this case you can perform your recursions on uh, just these elements and these to the right so we've kind of reduced the number of elements that we are recursing over that's very useful if you have a lot of duplicates in your array and uh, it's pretty similar to what we did previously so let's quickly code that down and then uh, we'll quickly test it out and hopefully this is a short video right so we'll call this partition into three parts so we'll call it partition three it's going to be very similar at least that's what I hope. I mean, sometimes when you ra start writing code, you realize that, okay, there are some challenges. But yeah, let's see how we deal with them. Uh, what are we going to do? So we instead of returning just a boundary, we need to return, uh, we need to return two elements or two indices here, right? So we'll go for, oops, what happened there? Okay yeah there you go so we will have let's say uh we'll have of course a current element to scan through the array we'll set it to low plus one just like before now instead of boundary we will have uh begin and start or let's say left and right right so left would be similar to boundary so we'll set that to low the right will set it to low Hmm, interesting actually the uh, yeah this is correct and left we can actually set it to low plus one so we'll 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 see I this is just my intuition but we'll see and obviously we can just copy this part in case you haven't seen this video as I said I'll uh, you know a card should appear in the screen you can click on that and go to the quick sort video that was uploaded before this uh, so anyways just to reiterate this is just uh, picking a random index as a pivot and uh, swapping the low position low index in the array with that random randomly chosen index anyways uh, after this okay let's code this thing out while current is less than equal to high so this is just we are scanning the array and now if the current element is less than or equal to the pivot right same as before right same as before this check so what do we do what do we do is we'll uh, take our right we'll increment our right and we will swap the current element with the right element so this is the same thing that we did before it's just you know the we're now calling it right instead of boundary but there's one more thing that we will have to do obviously we'll need to increment our current pointer but there's one more thing that we will also have to do, which is just this. That if, so after having swapped, this is what I feel, we will obviously do a dry run and test this thing out. But after having performed this first swap, if the element at index right is less than your pivot, not less than or equal to just less than your pivot, because we want to deal with those numbers, which are lesser than the duplicate. In that case, I think we can just swap our uh, left and right indices and obviously we'll increment our left. So 
after having done this as a final step we can swap low with left and then uh, we can return okay so now instead of an integer there should be an array because we have to return two indices so we can take an array of size two and return left and right is that correct hmm. is that right well first of all what is missing oh, is this not the right way to integer of size two with elements left and right what's wrong Lost my mojo. So, what am I going to have to set it like this? Hmm. Interesting. Maybe I'm not sure why the other way didn't work, but okay, we will return it like this. But yeah, but more importantly, we need to do a quick dry run here, right? Just to test this thing out real quick. So let's just take a quick example and uh, that should help us out. So let's say we have 6, 5, 4, 6, 6, 9, 7, something like this, right? Now we have a left, we have a right, we have a current. Okay, we also have a low, we also have a high. These are the five uh, pointers that we have essentially. So, what is our left? We set our left to low plus one. What is our low? Our low is zero. Our high is uh, how many elements do we have? We have seven elements. So, our high is six. We set our current to one, low plus one, and we set our right to zero. We set our left to one. And now we start. Let's say we've randomly chosen six as the pivot. So, we start and we compare the current with pivot. So 5, which is our current element, we compare that to 6. So is 5 less than or equal to 6? Yes, it is. So we increment right. We swap right and current. In this case, they are one and the same. So nothing really happens. Then we further check if right is less than pivot. Yes, it is. So we increment. So we swap right and left first. Nothing happens. And we increment our left. And we also increment our current. Okay, so now current is here. 4 is compared with 6. Is 4 less than or equal to 6? Yes, it is. So right becomes 2. Right and current are swapped. 2 and 2 are swapped. Nothing happens. Now, is our right less than pivot? Yes, it is. So right and left are swapped. They are still the same. So nothing happens. But left is incremented again. And so is current. Now current moves to... Uh, index 3 which is 6 is 6 less than or equal to pivot which is 6 yes it is so right moves forward and uh, what happens right moves forward right and current are swapped okay nothing happens again and uh, is right less than pivot it's equal to pivot it's not less than pivot so we move on current becomes 4 okay so we have another six so this is going to be the same right will become four current will become five left will be untouched now we move on to nine nothing happens in this case because nine is greater than six so just the current is the one that gets incremented and then we have seven okay so nothing happens in this case as well and uh, now we have scanned the entire array current becomes seven we break out of the loop so this is our left and right so our left is 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, right here. And what is it that we do right at the end? We swap low and left. So we swap 0 and 3. Hmm. Oh, I think that's a bit of modification needed. We need to swap. Okay, I get it. This has to be left minus 1. Right. Yes, this has to be left minus 1. Because, you know, these are the boundaries obviously so we want to swap with something before that hmm. I think this looks correct 
in order to be able to actually test this out i will have to make a small modification in the quick sort function obviously so we will comment out the original implementation of quick sort with two way partition and we will say something like this um int we'll say in this is this is an array we'll call partition 3 pass our lows and highs and then we will say quick sort array and uh, we will say low and indices of zero right and what do we have here so this is wait hold on a second this is returning left minus one so in this case it returns left minus one two <laughs> so it returns zero one two okay So this is correct then we will yeah, this should be correct I think so and uh, what do we have here indices of one plus one and high so this is going to be right plus one so five so zero one two three four five yeah so from five and high all right just one more time making sure this is left so low to left actually we return left minus one so so low to left minus one low is zero zero to left minus one which is two so zero to two zero one and two yeah, so we just records on this part oh hold on i think there is a mistake okay one thing we never fixed is we okay so we did another swap here so this is how the actual array looks like right at the end because of the final we i didn't actually write down the final swap so this is how the actual array looks like at the end so okay so then this has to be in this is zero minus one actually because we just want to recurse on this part so this looks good let's test this out and see how this goes so we have our main function yes we do have our main function we can test it out we have a while loop here so let's try out a few combinations so we'll bring this up okay there you go so let's try something uh let's have an array of size let's say seven what do we have six nine six five six four seven okay that sorting looks good let's take another example really quick six five four six six nine and seven Oops. okay that looks good as well let's take one more example let's say six three six six uh just put anything actually okay that looks good as well let's, let me take one more in this let's not have duplicates in this case just to make sure just to just for posterity i guess okay looks good if we just have two elements one and one looks good if we just have the one element looks good we'll take one more just for <coughs> my own peace of mind actually i'm going to put a lot of duplicates in this how many do we have all right looks good all right guys so i'm going to close this uh, video off it's already 14 minutes i wanted to keep it very short uh, but uh, yeah i mean this kind of uh, this is just a useful modic modification if you want to do but a uh, quick sort on a, on an array which has a lot of non-unique elements you can <coughs> potentially consider you doing a three-way partition which might be a little more efficient which is a little more efficient then uh, doing the partition in the old way but uh, uh, the choice is entirely up to you obviously hopefully uh, this video is useful uh, what is the intention of doing these kind of videos again obviously it's not so much to teach anybody anything it's mostly for my own practice i've not been coding for a very long time but yeah anybody who watches this video and wants to do uh, wants to write these uh, wants to implement these uh, problems alongside me 
as they watch the video then that would be excellent and uh, good luck to you guys hopefully i can come up with more problems in the future if you've liked if you've enjoyed this video uh, give me a thumbs up uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, if you want me to solve more problems uh, just mention those in the comments down below and i will pick them up for sure uh, one more thing before I go, I have another channel, uh, which is actually my main channel where I make more content regularly, at least I'm trying to. So please check that out if you've got some time and thank you very much once again. Goodbye.